the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. We confess our sins to the Lord God. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done, and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We just deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. On this year of confession, and by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the Word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. You may be seated. In our Old Testament reading this day, it comes to us from Ezekiel chapter 2, beginning with the first verse. This is also the basis for our message this day. He said to me, Son of man, stand on your feet, and I will speak with you. And as he spoke to me, the Spirit entered into me and set me on my feet, and I heard him speaking to me. And he said to me, Son of man, I send you to the people of Israel, to nations of rebels who have rebelled against me. They and their fathers have transgressed against me to this very day. The descendants also are impudent and stubborn. I send you to them, and you shall say to them, Thus says the Lord. And whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house. They will know that a prophet has been among them. Here then also reading from 2 Corinthians chapter 12, beginning with the first verse. I must go on boasting, though there is nothing to be gained by it. I will go on to visions and revelations of the Lord. I know a man in Christ, who fourteen years ago was cut up to the third heaven. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And I know that this man was cut up into paradise. Whether in the body or out of the body, I do not know. God knows. And he heard things that cannot be told, which man may not utter. On behalf of this man, I will boast. But on my own behalf, I will not boast, except of my weaknesses. Though if I should wish to boast, I would not be a fool, for I would be speaking the truth. But I refrain from it, so that no one may think more of me than he sees in me or hears from me. So to keep me from becoming too elated by the surpassing greatness of the revelations, a thorn was given me in the flesh, a messenger of Satan to harass me, to keep me from being too elated. Three times I pleaded with the Lord about this, that it should leave me. But he said to me, My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Therefore I will boast all the more gladly about my weaknesses, so that the power of Christ may rest upon me. For the sake of Christ, then, I am content with weakness, insults, hardships, persecutions, and calamities. For when I am weak, then I am strong. Please rise for the reading of the Holy Gospel. And the Gospel of the State comes to us from Mark chapter 6. Begin reading with verse 1. Jesus went away from there and came to his hometown. 
and the disciples followed him. And on the Sabbath he began to teach in the synagogue, and many who heard him were astonished, saying, Where did this man get these things? What is the wisdom given to him? How are such mighty works done by his hands? Is not this the carpenter, the son of Mary, and brother of James, and Joseph, and Judas, and Simon? And are not his sisters here with us? And they took offense at it. And Jesus said to them, A prophet is not without honor except in his hometown, and among his relatives, and in his own household. And he could do no mighty work there, except that he laid his hands on a few sick people and healed them. And he marveled because of their unbelief. And he went about among the villages teaching. And he called the twelve and began to send them out two by two. And he gave them authority over the unclean spirits. He charged them to take nothing for their journey except the staff. No bread, no bread, no money in their belts, but to wear sandals and not put on two tunics. And he said to them, Whenever you enter a house, stay there until you depart from there. And if any place will not receive you, and they will not listen to you, when you leave, shake off the dust that is on your feet as a testimony against them. So they went out and proclaimed that people should repent, and they cast out many demons, and anointed with oil many who were sick, and healed them. Thus far, the Gospel of our Lord. We join together in confessing our common Christian faith as we use the words of the Nicene Creed, as you see it in the inside of the back cover of your hymnal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of His Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, and who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven, and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary, and was made man, and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the Scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead, and the life of the world to come. Amen. You may be seated. We'll sing our next hymn, hymn 826, and we'll sing verses 1 and 2. Verses 1 and 2.
Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's have a show of hands. How many of you like getting telemarketer calls? It's unanimous. How many of you always say yes to whatever they're trying to sell or what service they're trying to provide or charity that they're trying to pitch? Again, unanimous. How many of you, in one way or another, have oftentimes refused what they're trying to sell or the charity they're trying to pitch? Yeah, me too. I've oftentimes wondered, how many no's do they have to go through before they get a yes? I'm sure experts in the industry probably have those statistics and could answer that very question. But I suspect that they have to go through a lot of no's, a lot of hang-ups, before they get somebody to say yes. Imagine it's quite a challenge in many ways. But what's even more amazing <clears throat> is as we share the Word of God with the world in which we live, in many ways it is like that as well. The Word of God can be resisted for now. And what makes it so amazing is, is we have the words of the very Creator. We have the words of the all-powerful, almighty God one who gave life, the one who will restore life, the one who has made his way known clear to us. He has warned us that we cannot stand in the judgment on our own feet. The guilt of our sin condemns us, but he's also given us a message of great hope, a hope that we have in Jesus Christ, the one who suffered the ultimate rejection for us, not only rejected by his people, but even but rejected by the Father, the Heavenly Father, as he hung upon the cross for our sin. But Jesus suffered in this way, and he suffered this rejection so that we might be accepted for all eternity. This is better than you may have already won. This is better than you are the winner of a vacation or some tickets or whatever. This is eternal life. This truly is the golden ticket. We have won it all. In fact, our risen Lord gives to us that great promise of the resurrection, of the renewal of all things, when everything in creation will be made perfect, and we along with it. But these words of God are not always well received. Oftentimes, they will be faced with a no. Sometimes, perhaps, because, well, the law, who likes to hear the law of God? No one likes to hear our guilt and be rebuked and corrected. But even the gospel, even the joy of the hope that we have in Jesus Christ, maybe because some are in their pride, they don't want to admit they can't do it on their own. Maybe they're just too caught up with the things of here and now in this world that they just aren't that interested. But for whatever reason, the Word of God, the proclamation of the Gospel is oftentimes met with many no's before someone receives it. In our Old Testament reading today, we encounter the prophet Ezekiel. And here in our text, we see that Ezekiel appears before the Lord, kind of like he's in the heavenly courtroom. And he's lying there prostrate on the floor before the Almighty God. And the Spirit enters into him and stands him on his feet. And the Lord speaks to him and he, and he sends him on a mission. Would be a challenging mission. The year was somewhere around 526 BC, and 
was a difficult time for Israel. They had been exiled, conquered by Babylon, carried away into exile. The holy temple where God was present with his people was destroyed. And God sends Ezekiel to go to them. To go to them in this foreign land, in this foreign land of Babylon, and, and to bring them a message. And really a message of hope. God had not left them, even though their temple was destroyed. God had not totally forsake them, even though they had come under judgment. There was hope. We're told in our text that Ezekiel is sent to a rebellious house. Here the people of God are described much like any other unbelieving pagan nation might be described. But for Israel, in many ways, it was worse. They had already the grace of God's word. But they rejected it. They worshipped false gods. They turned away from the Lord. And the judgment of exile reigned upon them. But God gave them another chance. He again sends Ezekiel to go, to make this word known to them. They were not forsaken. And so God sends Ezekiel. He says, I am sending you. Notice the message that Ezekiel is to bring. Verse 4 of our text, Thus says the Lord. Oh, he's not just making a, a quick phone call trying to sell a product or even pitch a charity. He's bringing the very words of the Almighty Lord. Thus says the Lord. But God is a realist. He knows what to expect. And he warns Ezekiel, they might not listen to you, but go anyway. In fact, in verse 5, you'll notice it says, whether they hear or refuse to hear, for they are a rebellious house, they will know that a prophet has been among them. Ezekiel, you might get some yeses, but you might get a lot of noes, and they may refuse to listen to what you have to say, but go anyway. Be faithful to the task. Then they will know one day that a prophet has been among them, when your words come true, when they do return. God tells Ezekiel really makes no difference what their response is, just go. Be faithful to the task. Oh, in this world, oftentimes, if something is not successful, of course, we scrap it, we try to find a different approach, a different way. And certainly, there can be ways to do that. But Ezekiel here is called not necessarily to be successful in the eyes of the world, but to be faithful. Go. I'm sending you. In fact, as the chapter continues, you don't have this in your bulletin, but in the rest of chapter 2 of Ezekiel, verse 6, it says this, And you, O son of man, be not afraid of them, nor be afraid of their words, though briars and thorns are with you, and you sit on scorpions. Be not afraid of their words, nor did be dismayed at their looks, for they are a rebellious house. Oh, we may at times be fearful and nervous about how people will respond. What if they look at us? What if they reject us? What if they're stern? What if they hang up? Go anyway. Verse 7 again, God reiterates to Ezekiel that he is to go whether they hear or don't hear. It's a key aspect of this chapter. <clears throat> but God has recorded these words, not just for the people 2,500 years ago, but they hold true in every generation, in every time. Because the truth of the matter is, is there's nothing new under the sun. 
We too are rebellious people. We've been born in sinful nature. We've not always heeded God's words. The law condemns us. We can't stand in his judgment. But God is gracious. God is merciful. He sends us a Savior. And he sends us a message of hope. You know, it's incredible. If you think about it, at one point or another in your life, God sent someone to make his word known to you. Maybe it was a parent, maybe it was a grandparent, maybe it was someone else. But at one point or another, God sent someone to make that word of God known to you in your life. He brought you to faith. He brought you to trust in Jesus the one who suffered the ultimate rejection for us. He brought you to faith to believe in Jesus who was crucified for our sins and risen for our salvation. So that believing in him, you will be accepted by God in heavenly glory. You'll be accepted for all eternity. You will be a part of his recreation, his renewal of things glorious place where all things will be made known. God has given you his spirit. He has stood you up in your feet. He's given you faith. He sent you to go. By that spirit of God, God sends us on this mission. The spirit of God gathers us together as he does this day, as he does so often. He gathers us together to focus and hear his word, that unchanging word that has been passed down from generation to generation. He gathers us together so that we may grow in that, in our faith and grow in our understanding of that word and that hope that we have. And then by his spirit, he sends us to go. It's our mission, focus, gather, grow, and go. But to go with the word of God. Oh, he knows that we live in a time where many may not receive the message. We might get a lot of no's. Sometimes people may be prideful in their sin. Isaiah chapter 3 verse 9 says this, They proclaim their sin like Sodom. They do not hide it. Woe to them, for they have brought evil on themselves. God knows he's sending us to people that will not always receive the message. He knows he's sending us to people that may hang up, so to say, reject us. But he sends us to go anyway, whether they hear or refuse to hear. Go, our Lord says. And where does he send us? Well, he sends us in many places. He sends us to rosebuds, to go to the staff. It seems so young and so new to the workforce. To go to the children there who are just trying to figure out what life is like in this world. To go to the families that may seem so busy and disinterested in the things of faith, so distant, but he calls us to go. And by the grace of God and the Spirit, we have, as a congregation, have called Deaconess Alicia to come and aid us and help us in that task of going. And I certainly commend you for that. We've put energy and resources toward it. <coughs> whether they hear or not, whether we are successful or not, we certainly pray for that success. But either way, God calls us to be faithful to the task, to go. To go to the people in our community. Go to those that are familiar with our culture and our ways and seem to fit in well. Go to those who have a different culture are unfamiliar to those who look different, who speak a little different, to those who have some different traditions. 
different backgrounds. Go. Go to the people around you, wherever you encounter them, whether it be your home, your neighborhood, or wherever you may be. And whether you are successful or not, go anyway, because God calls us to be faithful to this task. Go to the people that are afraid that as we face many threats and dangers and uncertainty, that we have a message of hope, a message of victory, and we have the one who will accept us for eternity. We have our Lord Jesus. Do not be afraid of them. Do not be dismayed or discouraged. But be faithful. Go because we are offering something more valuable than anything else the world can offer. More valuable than any product, any service, or any other charity of this world. We're offering the golden ticket to heaven. We're offering place in the membership of the kingdom of God for eternity, a place won by the blood of Christ, received through faith in our risen Savior. What a gift it is. There is no greater treasure. And so sent by the Spirit and empowered by the Word of God, whether they hear or refuse to hear, our Lord says, Go. Amen. Now may the peace of God which passes all understanding keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus, our risen Lord and Savior. Amen. We respond to God's grace and His mercy as we present ourselves and our offerings to Him. Please rise. Almighty Father in heaven, you are generous and gracious and you abundantly provide for our needs and even our wants. You give to us a message of hope and so receive these offerings, receive our lives, our worship, our time as a thanksgiving for your mercies in our life. Let us pray. Almighty Lord, you have called us to faith. You've given us your spirit. You have spoken your word. You've assured us that because of your son, Jesus Christ, you will receive us and accept us for eternity. Lord, you have called us in so many ways, not only to believe and to trust in you, but to follow you. You have called us even to go and to bring this message of hope in the world in which we live. Lord, we ask that we not get discouraged or dismayed, but that you would regularly encourage us, stand us on our feet, and send us forth. Lord, in your mercy. Now, my Lord, this day we bring before you those who face hardships, natural disasters, and floods, and fires, from wind. Those who face hardships from other disasters, war and conflict, pain and suffering of all sorts. We ask, O oh Lord, this day that you especially be with your servants, Diane Manship. Lon Stolte, Charlie Smith, be with Jackie Rudd, Tony Buggs, Clifford Schleicher, Nikki James, be with Ken Summerfield and Bo Hansen and Pat Raymond, Michael Berger, Bob Lang, James Auger, Matilda Mohan, and all that we name in our hearts. Grant, O oh Lord, 
your hand of mercy and strength, strengthen both faith and physical well-being according to your good and gracious will. Lord, we also ask that you be with us in all circumstances. We pray, O oh Lord, that you'd be with us in this land. You have established government to work good in our lives. Give all those in positions of authority and wisdom and guidance to reach that endeavor. Guide all things according to your spirit. We look to you, Lord, trusting in your mercy and your goodness, giving you thanks again for this sacrament that you grant to us this day, your body and blood shed for us. Hear us then, O Lord, as we pray and as you have taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Lord bless you and keep you. Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. We'll sing our closing hymn, and again, I invite you to uh, turn to uh, hymn 826, Hark the Voice of Jesus Crying, and we'll sing verses 3 and 4. Mm -hmm. 